Hi everyone, for this lesson we're going to continue where we left off last time and we had talked about the seven different vowels in the Greek language or the Greek alphabet and that those seven characters actually represented ten different sounds. We had five vowel types as I call them, A, E, I, O, U, and then each of those were short or long. So for alpha we had either short or long alpha. For epsilon we had long eta and short epsilon. Sorry, for E we had long eta and short epsilon. For iota we had long iota and short iota. For O sound we had the uh, omega which was always long and then the short omicron. And then upsilon we had a long upsilon and a short upsilon. And we, we kind of recalled that eta and omega stand out as always long just as epsilon and omega stand out as always short. So always long over here and always short here. Alright, so this is great. We've got seven characters. Uh, you know, you don't want to have too many characters. There's only so many you know characters you can fit on a keyboard or if you don't have a keyboard because it's you know, 500 BCE, uh, you still just don't want to have too many characters to work with. You don't necessarily need a different character for every different sound. And that's what we see here. We've got omega and eta. These are unique characters for the, you know, the long versions. But we see alpha, iota, and upsilon are able to do double duty, uh, creating two different sounds or two different lengths with one character. Well, there are more vocal and kind of vowel sounds than just these 10, you know, A, E, I, O, U's, long and shorts. Oftentimes, vowels will be combined in different forms to create a, a kind of new sound that might be a transition between two different vowel sounds. You're, you're moving your tongue as you say the, the vowel sound, and these are often represented in what we were uh, I previewed a little bit as diphthongs. So these are, you know, what is a diphthong? It's uh, a combination of two vowels producing, I'm just making this up now, but it's, a, it's the right definition, of two vowels producing one unique, maybe we'll say, vowel syllable. So what I'm saying here is if we were to put alpha and iota next to each other, alpha as an a ah plus iota e, um, and we had say, you know, we could think of the English kind of word like ie, you're, you're screaming because you're rolling down a roller coaster or something. We've got this i in English which is even though it's a vowel functioning like a a consonant ah uh, and then we kind of get this y sound here that's not a a vowel so much as a, a kind of consonantal y a uh, e um, or even if we were to drop that and to say a uh, e uh, taking a little pause to separate that these are two vowels being pronounced separately they're not forming a diphthong they come right after each one right after the other iota right after alpha uh, but we might as well have put something there, like a ta, a ti, or however we want to do it. So that's not a diphthong. That's just an example of two vowels together. What makes a diphthong? Well, let's say we put that alpha and that iota together again, but pronounce them, tr you know, together. Not not putting that space a e, but through one continuous, you know, vocalization, your vocal cord is going to be constantly running from an A sound down to the E sound. The E is pronounced kind of closer to your teeth and the lips of your mouth. A is a little bit further back uh, in, your, in, your, you know, in your mouth as you're pronouncing these things. So you move down with, you know, like, if we could draw, this is going to be a bad, you know, there's kind of roof of the mouth. Uh, let's get some uh, white teeth over here. Good. Uh, I'm going to get a tongue drawn. And then, uh, I guess we'll we have some more teeth over here going back. But, you know, we start off with the alpha over here, I, and then go down toward the iota. We don't make it all the way to an iota. We, we don't end an E sound, but we kind of get the I. 
uh, and then drop the E and we kind of have an I and that's exactly what this diphthong is you know it's pronounced as we might pronounce you know the Y and the Phi uh, or fine this I sound so that's a diphthong we've got alpha functioning with iota these are this isn't two syllables this is one sound I uh, but as you're pronouncing it your tongue is moving you are combining these two kind of building block vowel sounds, the alpha and the yoda, into one that's more complicated but still remains one vowel sound uh, and, and a unitary syllable, all right? Uh, so there are, let's see, eight diphthongs in Greek. We, we have the first one there, I. We also have epsilon, iota, and this is pronounced kind of A, uh, as we might say like bait. That A. And then we have oi. And modern Greeks pronounce this very differently. This is a, just a kind of straight E for them. So whenever you see something, you know, whenever they hear, you know, English people studying ancient Greek and saying "oi," <laughs> that they, they are taken a little bit of back. But yeah, we might say this is like "boy," "oi." So I, maybe like you know, I, A, "oi." Next we have an upsilon iota, and this is kind of a uh, "w" sound. So, uh, so we might have, you know, it, like witch, but uh, don't pronounce the H, you know, don't be like witch, uh, but as we would normally pronounce witch, wick, wick, like a wick maybe of a candle might be a nice way to do it too, candle wick. All right, so we've got those four. Next we have alpha upsilon, um, and that's going to be, if you, if you know, kind of like German, like house uh, or mouse even, this, um, yeah, mouse would be a good one. This ow kind of sound, a, a u alpha upsilon. Next we have epsilon upsilon, and this is a little bit, you know, what I was saying is uh, these are very connected. Alpha iota, there's that glide. They become one thing. This is something close to u. Uh, drop that that y though. So just the u. Um, but you also sometimes you might find that these are a little bit separated. Kind of textbook example is Odysseus. So that's Odysseus, right? Uh, the hero from Ithaca. Um, so here we have this Eos, uh, and it, it, it's somewhat combined, but you could also say Odysseus uh, and, and somewhat separate. So I, I think of these first five diphthongs I've given you, they are very together, this uh, eo, epsilon, iota, and eta, or epsilon, epsilon, and eta, epsilon, have a little bit more separation to them. Um, so this would be just a longer version of, so this is Odysseus, this would be like Odysseus if we were to have that eu combination. And then finally, uh, we have omicron, epsilon, and this is uh, maybe English, boo, uh, a kind of very open, uh, you know, open. You, you'd purse your lips, make them into a circle, and say, ooh, uh, that's what's going on there. So we have now to kind of recap overall, let me scroll down just a little bit more. We have got se seven vowel characters, and those fill in for ten, let's call them basic vowel sounds. And those are um, A, E, I, O, U, both long and short. But then we also have them able to combine in only these eight combinations of diphthongs. Let's go back down just a little bit. Um, so eight diphthong. Uh, maybe call them units. So what we have from just these seven characters are a total of 18 vowel sounds. Ten of them can just be accomplished by the letters themselves, whether they're long or short, but these eight diphthongs, you know, combine different characters to create more vowel sounds. But these 18 vowel sounds will be our building blocks for the Greek language. Everything, every word is going to have at least one of these, 
And each vowel sound, whether it's a basic vowel or a diphthong, creates a syllable. You'll never have two vowel sounds or two diphthongs in one syllable. They're, they're kind of uh, one to one ratio. So we've got in total seven characters, but 18 vowel sounds. So we'll talk more about syllables and accentuation in a future lesson, but let's wrap this up now. See you next time.